So my name is Manuel, Manuel Maqueda. I am from Spain. I live in uh, Silicon Valley and in the San Francisco Bay Area. And my passion is future and emerging environmental issues and really how our society is struggling to solve the global problems that we are creating. And then my work is advising um, startups, startup companies, startup nonprofits, and hybrids and everything in between. So having a foot in, on each, each of those worlds gives me quite a unique perspective. And um, one of my fascinations lately is how we lack a framework of reference or a compass or where to go. We want to create a new economic system that works for everybody in the shortest period of time, but we don't know how to do it. And uh, this is one of the things that is central to my work. I was asked to speak about social entrepreneurship. And what I said is like, I think I would rather speak about radical entrepreneurship. So tomorrow I'm going to propose a new definition of the word radical. I'm going to be talking about radical as something that is not extreme, that is not dangerous, but something that is central to us. And I'm going to do this by redefining this word from the Latin. The Latin is radis, which means root. So radical as from the root can offer us a new insight on the new capacities that we need to move on towards the future. Uh, new uh, types of doing business, new entrepreneurship. So we need radical technologies, radical vision, um, radical art, radical education, etc., etc. Radical being based on three relationships. So it's not people, planet, profit, because I don't think it's useful to think of these things as separate from us, as objects. Like, let's take care of the planet or let's take care of people. These things are inside of us. This is who we are. We are part of people. We are part of planet. So I suggest relationships three relationships. The first one, and these relationships make up our root, our being radical. The first relationship is with ourselves, with our bodies and our consciousness. Deep, profound relationship. The second one is with our community and our family, people around us, and the global family as well. And the third relationship is with the web of life, with the immensely complex web of life. So my suggestion is connecting with these three relationships in order to create a radical framework to take decisions and to inform the new tools, the new capacities, the new visions that we need and the new entrepreneurship that we need to move to the future. We are in a learning process, right? So, and it's really hard to do this because we are inside our own system of beliefs and values, right? 200 years from now, people will look at our time and think, look at those guys, they were kind of barbaric. They thought they were consumers and producers. They look at the world in a very strange way. I think we look at the world in a very specific way. And it's really hard when you're inside of that worldview to create, to innovate things that are really disruptive. So what I look in these new forms of um, econom economic uh, organizations, what I look for is replicability. I look for scalability so it can grow and also mechanisms so that they can take over. Because right now it seems like an uphill battle to do green and social ventures, right? We need to convince people, the consumers, to support us. We need to convince the whole tissue of the economy to support those ventures or create crafty ways to plug in our message in there. So what I'm trying to figure out is in this multiplicity of uh, organizations that are appearing, which ones are achieving really changes that can be applicable to a whole system and which aren't. And that's how I came up with the radical proposition. I think those three relationships that I, would, I was describing as part of our root with ourselves, with our network of people around us and with the web of life are broken in all of us. Education, advertisement, all the prevailing messages tell us that we are not good enough. So we feel uncomfortable in our bodies and consciousness. We feel alienated from others, we see competitors in them, we compete, we want to have a better car, we want to have a big, bigger house, we want to excel, and then disconnect us from nature as well. Nature is something we take resources from and then we put our waste in it. So, my, again, I don't know, and uh, I think we need to be comfortable not knowing what the solution is, but a part of the solution has to come with creating a framework that would allow us to map out this new area of economic activity.
And I think honoring those three relationships that take us into being consumers and producers rather than being human beings might be a way to start uh, creating new insights, new speech, new vocabulary, new companies, new strategies, new leaderships that can be scaled to a whole planet. Leadership and entrepreneurship in the future. Well, some people think that the leader has to be green, has to be social. For me, green and social is the same. I mean, is Fukushima an environmental issue or is it a social issue? When there's hundreds of thousands of people, or may maybe millions affected, it's a global climate change, uh, environmental or social issue. There's 25 million environmental refugees, a figure that is likely to increase. So we need to move beyond that. I mean, the only way of leadership and entrepreneurship acceptable, and in that sense, inevitable, is one that is fully compatible with our existence in a fi finite, delicate, intricately interconnected planet. That's where we are. So the sooner we understand it and act accordingly, the better. And I think the only leadership possible in the future is one that takes this into account in a really visceral and profound way. And that's what I call radical, uh, radical leadership, radical entrepreneurship. And I see more of it coming and I hope, uh, I hope it happens.